six times a week. It's not real. It's not substantial. You need to go back to two years ago when the federal government in that same category was 17% smaller. Let's go back. Let's go back. And let's make sure these government bureaucrats are making the wages that real Americans are making. Rather than three times the wage for the average bureaucrat in Washington than what we're making here in Western North Carolina. We need to right-size government and give surety through a balanced budget. Because let's face it, when the government's getting in the business of getting lending, it soaks up capital that small businesses could use and drives out our ability to invest in jobs that strengthen our economy and actually will help fund government if people are employed. That's number two. Number three, an energy policy that says we as Americans can be energy independent. It means investments and exploration in the deep waters of our coast in remote areas of Alaska. You've heard this over and over and over again. The difference now is that people are engaged and we can make this happen. That means oil shale. It means nuclear. It means natural gas. It means oil wherever it is. It means investments in renewables like wind and solar and photovoltaic. All these options and opportunities are there for us, and we as Americans have to say enough is enough. We have more resources, more energy resources than any other country on the planet. It's not Saudi Arabia. It's not Russia. It's not, uh, you know, name the country. We outstrip all the rest of the world when it comes to our natural resources that create power, including clean coal. These things are in our capacity. And when you talk about energy policy, the investments made by Apple and Google, the investments that our next generation of jobs are going to need require affordable, cheap power. And our power infrastructure came out of two things in our region. It came out of furniture and textiles. And so we have this great resource here of power, and we have to build on that. So that's number three. Number four, well, I've, I've rubbed some people the wrong way when it comes to trade policy in Washington. But I've done the right thing for Western North Carolina. And we have to have a trade policy that says our American capacity, our American workers are the best, brightest, and strongest in the world. And we have to have trade policies out of Washington that back up our American workforce and our ability here in Western North Carolina to compete on a level playing field. Not trade for just the sake of trade, but trade that strengthens our economy and gives workers opportunities here in the United States and our ability to grow our economy. And that hasn't always been popular, the, the line I just gave you, the message I just gave you. It's not always been popular in Washington, but I'm going to continue fighting on that. And we can have disagreements among friends on trade policy, but the fact is, our American workers need to be respected and given the opportunity to compete on a level playing field. Not just have a trade agreement for the sake of a trade agreement. So let's invest in our American workers. Number five, as a result of trade, some bad trade deals, as a result of this displaced uh, workers in our economy, you know, folks are losing their jobs and have lost their jobs. And the way the economy works in a free market is what was destroyed yesterday may not be restored tomorrow. The jobs will be different. In our case, in our region, they're going to largely be different. But we have the people. And we have to make those investments. This is point number five. We have to make those investments in our training programs. That begins at a community college. That also begins at our higher education resources. We've got LR right here in the community. We've got CVCC. We have higher education resources from Appalachian State. We've got these great opportunities through the Engineering Center, the Higher Education Center, these great opportunities. We have to give our people the ability to go to these training programs. And that means we have to invest in our people to make our community the home of the 21st century workforce. And that's going to take some effort. That's going to take some effort. But we have the opportunity. We've got the resources here. And the human capital, the people, we just have to give them the opportunity to get the training they need for tomorrow's jobs not just be content to have yesterday's skills. Those are the five key points.
experience as I see it. Those are the opportunities and challenges that we face. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy at all. But we have to make these investments. We have to have the people engaged and the people involved. And with a room like this, looking around this room, looking at business leaders, looking at people that rather than being at their desk or at their business trying to get things done, they've given up a few hours in the morning. You could be doing many things this morning. But you're here because you want your voice heard. And you want to know what our plan is. And don't accept this plan as your plan. Let's have this conversation about how we make this happen. And how we make it possible. You know, and some, right now, we've heard this over the last few months, that, you know, maybe things aren't going to come back. Maybe America's best days were yesterday. You know? Well, I'll say this. A year ago, they said uh, on the cover of a Newsweek magazine to ask the question, are we all socialists? How quickly a year turns. I think we see more capitalists now than socialists. I don't care what the polling says, but in this community, we've got people that love free markets, that love free enterprise and our opportunity to grow. But some are saying, well, we'll just be eclipsed by China. No. No. Our economy is multiple times the size of China. We've got the best trained workforce on the planet. We have hardworking people that know how to put in an honest day's work. We have inventive people that are trying to create the next idea, maybe in their garage, maybe in their basement. And it's those next ideas. And we look historically and realize that the strongest businesses were started during economic downturns. And if this is not an economic downturn, I don't know what is. But I'll tell you, when these people say we'll just be eclipsed by China, I don't buy it. And you shouldn't buy it. It's our human capital. It's our capacity here. These things are in our hands. Our capacity to make a change is in our hands. Don't let anybody hand anything to you. Take it by your own hand and do something big. Something big for our economy. And that something big may be employing one person. It may be creating a business that only employs you. But that is something big. It's in our hands. It's in our hands to make our community the kind of place that our children's children will want to live. And can. Thank you.